Hello. <clears throat> Hello, yeah. history hikers <laughs> here. I'm Dries. My name is Jente. We are in Montserrat. There's a castle behind us, which we're gonna check out. But it's more of a ruin at the moment. Um, no history. Well, maybe like a little bit of etymology first about Montserrat, because it means something. Well, I found it funny and rather peculiar. It means Mont, it's mountain, and Serre comes from Sereno, which is the name of little bird, a migratory bird from Africa. Um, in French, they call it Guépier, and in English, it's a bee eater. So this is the mountain of the bee eater's castle. All right, let's check it out. Montserrat is a town in the Haute Department in the south of France. It's located in the Corbière region, a mountain range in the pre-Pyrenees. On top of a large rocky plateau above the village, we can find the ruins of its castle. It's a fairly large castral site with a lot of remains, granting the visitor a good idea of what it used to look like. Montserrat Castle was first mentioned in the 10th century. Some hundred years later, a village community formed at the foot of the site. In 1153, Reingarde, a lady of Montserrat, founded the first Cistercian Abbey for women in the south of France. This was the Abbey of Saint-Marie et Saint-Bernard des Aulieux, and was located in Montserrat. At the beginning of the crusade against the Albigensians, in 1209, Montserrat was spared siege and destruction by Simon de Montfort's army. Signage is a nice change of pace compared to the castles we had visited thus far. Several steps along, we could for the first time take a look at the castle in earnest. The walls on this side seemed almost flush with the rocky outcrop below them, truly a terrifying sight for any attacker. A little further still, we got treated to some spectacular views which seems to be a staple for all of these castles, and the region in general. Let's talk some more about the castle's history. In 1304, the knight Guillaume Raymond de Bourg, Lord of Montserrat, died, leaving his wife Ricarda alone to bring up their daughter Mabilia. Both mother and daughter did everything in their power to keep possession of the castle and the land. However, in 1311, Mabilia lost her rights to Montserrat to the nearby powerful abbey of Fontfroide. It was only in 1329 that she regained her rights after a fierce legal battle. In 
1336, the last descendant of the family died without leaving an heir. What happened to Montserrat between 1336 and 1550 can no longer be ascertained. In 1550, the plague broke out in the region and Montserrat was not spared. The village and the castle were abandoned and the whole site fell into ruin. In the early 20th century, the castle was used as a stone quarry for the construction of the railroad. Finally, after walking around the entire hill, we got to some structurally sound stairs. Oh, This is not too stable. A little rickety. We were now entering the ruin of Montserrat Castle. On top of the plateau we have a clear sight of the castle remains. The castle was built over five periods according to the signs we saw there. Buildings spanned from the 9th to the 16th century and were now actually passing by the newer parts. The structure here in the middle was a donjon or keep and dates from the 13th and 16th centuries. We continued on towards the most scenic part of the site, the watchtower. From here you have a perfect panoramic view of the castle and the Corbière. In the distance you can even see the castle of saint martin de toc some 5 kilometers away. Making our way over to the other side of the site, we pass by the donjon. Then we see the remains of a larger structure, probably the Lord's residence and kitchen. Continuing on, we see what's left of the ruined southern gate. We actually passed by it on our way up, but there's no way of climbing up these days. We suspect a wooden bridge or ladder was used here in the Middle Ages.
<laughs> we eventually make our way up to the oldest part of the castle, the original 9th century Maison Fort or stronghold. Despite having the fewest remains, the rocky hilltop makes the best spot for the picture. What an amazing castle. Uh, really loved it here. Uh, you can clearly see some buildings left and imagine what it might have been. They also give some well, like background information of what these buildings are supposed to be, so that, that helps with imagining. Yeah. I think it's time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. I'm gonna say the last one was an eight and a half. No, the last one was an eight. Last one was an eight. In uh what was it called? It was Saint Pierre de Clare. Montredon. In Montredon. Yes. Montredon. So the last one an eight, and then this is an eight and a half. The added signs with the added information uh, gives it the advantage. I also up my score from Mont Redon with a half, so seven and a half. Mainly just because of the views, I'm really subjective on the views. This one is really amazing. Um, the castle stands on Roca Longua, it's like one Ooh. big long rock. It's magnificent. And yeah, as Dries said, a little text with information nice to read give some extra to the castle just more than just some stones where you have to imagine yourself oh this might be this or this might be that but you now you really know all right that was it from Mont Serré and we'll see you one we'll see you all at the next one thank you for watching if you want to see more of this type of content check out the playlists on our channel be sure to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and leave a comment if you have any feedback Consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to receive a notification when we upload new videos. We are the History Hikers, we share the castle love, and until next time. Bye! Bye.